On October 28, 2023, Mr. Perry was found deceased in his home. An autopsy was conducted following his death. That autopsy showed that he had died due to the acute effects of ketamine. Ketamine is a controlled substance. It has some legitimate uses, but it is also used illegally. It is used by people seeking to disassociate from reality. It can cause serious health effects, serious health problems, including loss of consciousness, including spikes in blood pressure, and including respiratory issues that can deprive the brain of oxygen. For that reason, it is, it is a drug that must be administered by medical professionals, and the patient must be monitored closely. That did not occur here. This investigation focused on who supplied the ketamine to Mr. Perry. As many of you know, Mr. Perry struggled with addiction in the past. And on many occasions, he sought help for his addiction issues. The investigation revealed that in the fall of 2023, Mr. Perry fell back into addiction, and these defendants took advantage to profit for themselves. The two lead defendants in this case are defendants Salvador Placencia and defendant Jasveen Sanya. First, I'll talk about defendant Placencia. Defendant Placencia was a medical doctor. He worked with another medical doctor, defendant Mark Chavez, to obtain ketamine. He then worked with Mr. Perry's live-in assistant, defendant Kenneth Iwamasa, to distribute that ketamine to Mr. Perry. Over two months, from September to October 2023, they distributed approximately 20 vials of ketamine to Mr. Perry in exchange for $55,000 in cash. Defendant Placentia saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. He wrote in a text message in September 2023, quote, I wonder how much this moron will pay. He also stated in text messages that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's sole source of supply. He wrote in a text message that he wanted to be Mr. Perry's, quote, go-to for drugs. As a doctor, defendant Placentia knew full well the danger of what he was doing. In fact, on one occasion, he injected Mr. Perry with ketamine, and he saw Mr. Perry freeze up and his blood pressure spike. Despite that, he left additional vials of ketamine for defendant Iwamasa to administer to Mr. Perry. Of course, defendant Iwamasa had no medical training to speak of. Defendant Placentia knew what he was doing was harming Mr. Perry. He had spoken to another patient in mid-October 2023, and he told that patient that Mr. Perry was spiraling out of control with his addiction. Nonetheless, Defendant Placentia continued to offer ketamine to Mr. Perry. Likewise, Defendant Sonia knew what she was doing was harming defendant, uh, defendants and also Mr. Perry. She took advantage of Mr. Perry by selling large amounts of ketamine to Mr. Perry over a two-week period in October of 2023. She sold approximately 50 vials of ketamine for approximately $11,000 in cash. She worked with a broker, defendant Eric Fleming, and also the live-in assistant, defendant Iwamasa, to distribute this ketamine. Sonia and the broker, defendant Fleming, saw this as an opportunity to profit off of Mr. Perry. In a text message, the broker wrote, quote, I wouldn't do it if there wasn't a chance of me making some money for doing this. Defendant Sonia sold the batch of ketamine that resulted in Mr. Perry's death on October 28th. As I mentioned, the defendants in this case knew what they were doing was wrong. When they'd refer to the ketamine, they used coded language. They'd refer to it using terms such as, quote, Dr. Pepper, or quote, bots, or quote, cans. Also, defendants Placentia and Chavez, as medical doctors, knew full well this was not the proper way to administer ketamine, and they even talked about that in their exchanges. 
And defendant Sonia also knew that she was doing something that caused great risk to Mr. Perry. After Mr. Perry died, these defendants tried to cover up what they had done. On October 28th, after reading news reports of Mr. Perry's death, defendant Sonia wrote a text message to defendant Fleming saying, quote, delete all our messages. Likewise, after Mr. Perry's death, defendant Placentia falsified medical records and notes to try to make it look like what he was doing was legitimate. It was not. We have filed numerous federal charges against the five defendants. These charges include conspiracy to distribute ketamine, distribution of ketamine resulting in death, maintaining drug-involved premises for that drug-selling emporium the defendant Sonia had, altering and falsifying records related to a federal investigation for those false medical notes and records that defendant Placentia made, and multiple other drug trafficking counts. Of course, the defendants are presumed innocent until proven guilty. The penalties these defendants face are very significant. With regard to defendant Placentia, the statutory maximum sentence he faces is 120 years in federal prison. Now, with regard to defendant Sonia, the statutory maximum she faces is life imprisonment. 